Welcome to the first in our series of webinars about Vulcan 10.1. In Vulcan 10.1, MapTech delivers further enhancements to the Vulcan Data Analyzer. Vulcan Data Analyzer was originally introduced in Vulcan 10 in April 2016, bringing a new interface which offers a streamlined approach to generating and analyzing variograms. The latest tools provide additional functionality in line with customer needs and best practice. MapTech Sales and Services Manager for Australasia, Steve Sullivan, has been closely involved with the Vulcan Data Analyzer since its inception. Today, he will provide an overview of its new features and their benefits. If you have any questions, please type them into the questions panel and we will try to address them at the end of Steve's presentation. I'll now hand over to Steve. Thanks, John, for the uh, generous introduction and uh, welcome to viewers to the uh, first of our Vulcan 10 webinars and this one particularly on the, the charting and variography tools. So a uh, quick summary of the new Vulcan Data Analyzer. Uh, in Vulcan 10, we uh, launched the Vulcan Data Analyzer for the first time, focusing on variography. Into Vulcan 10.1 now, we've added additional chart types, as you can see on the screen there, uh, it's stats, histograms, scatter plots, etc., etc. Uh, we've also increased the support for not just only uh, samples databases or compositing databases, but also into block models for selected areas. So what I'll do is I'll jump straight into it and we'll have a live session of, of how to set some of these up, um, some of the new features, and then we'll follow that up, as John said, with a question and answer at the end. Now, Vulcan 10.1 is set up in the MapTech workbench. Uh, Vulcan 10 was the first one to appear in the workbench. This uh, workbench is a unifying um, uh, architecture that MapTech's put in place for all of our products. Currently, Vulcan 10 was the first into this uh, workbench. Uh, Vulcan 10.1 now sits in workbench 1.1. So big differences there is that uh, we now have our Eureka Eureka product embedded directly into the workbench. So Eureka is now a native application here, uh, allowing better integration between uh, Vulcan and Eureka and any other of the applications at this level. Other MapTech applications down here, Studio, Sentry, Evolution, uh, they're on a development path uh, to come into this, as this MapTech workbench in, in future versions. So let's start up at Envisage very similar to Vulcan 10, um, quite different from those that are used to using Vulcan 9. But this is, as I said, our architecture for the next uh, you know, few generations, yeah, our interface. So if, just to remind you, those the data analyzer is uh, uh, appears under Analyze Data Analyzer. And what we um, have done is we replaced a lot of the block modeling and great estimation uh, variography in Vulcan 10 and now in Vulcan 10.1, we are now bringing into play a whole lot of, um, of the advanced statistics and bringing those advanced statistics back into, um, into the new interface. Now we open a data source. So um, previously we supported the compositing data types. And just a quick refresh um, and on the way through showing you some of the new features in the variography space. We have a data source here, it's got copper, gold, silver. I just grab a copper here, grab a fan, fan variogram over to the parameters panel on the right hand side, throw in some parameters there and press the uh, tick box. That goes away and, and does its uh, fan variograms. Now this is quite a large data set. Uh, it's, it'll take a little while, but it's a lot quicker than Vulcan 10. Uh, we've done some work behind the scenes, uh, looking at multi-threading and some other algorithms to speed up the processing for larger and larger data sets uh, within Vulcan. So when it starts processing, it generates a chart. Again, we we have a whole lot of parameters that you can uh, interactively adjust on our right hand side in the properties window. Uh, we can grab the uh, the bar of the variogram here and, and just have a look at the variability um, or correlation in various different orientations. We can also look at the semi-major and, the, and the, in the minor axis, again looking at the variability in those for, for this copper variable. So that's um, all uh, as per Vulcan 10. Now what we have done here uh, in this, this composite database, it's got a lot of uh, less than detections, uh, things which have been prefixed with a negative, like negative 05. I can now go through and filter those and I'll show you the new filter option. Um, we've enhanced the filtering uh, in VDA for 10.1. Um, I select a composite database and I generate a new filter. I'll give it a name. And what I'm trying to do with this filter is just generate um, data greater than zero. So this, this here is the 
database tab, I can just go through numeric filter, user range, anything from zero up to a large number. And that appears here now as a filter. I apply that filter to whatever I've selected down here in the, uh, the data explorer. And then when I select that, go back to the variography tab, go back to my properties and generate that again um, with the same settings that will uh, look at the filtered data. So I should be looking at a, a smaller subset of the, than, than the original data. So when that uh, appears, that will appear now as a tab. And as I go through this session, you'll see lots more tabs appear of every chart that I've developed. And those tabs then can be uh, uh, plotted or, or um, manipulated later. So I'll just, just make some adjustments here, just to review. So again, I'm just moving those around, having a look. Okay, I'll stop there, come back to the other ones, just have a little look, see what's going on here and the other orientations. Fairly uniform in this one, in this particular case. Now, now that I've filtered the data, it's getting a better result. So the next stage here is to model that data. Come over here up in the top right and click the little box and you know, maybe I'll add another structure. So this is all again function from 10.1. And we run an auto fit process where the algorithm uh, is, or the computer is going to automatically fit those two structures into that. So you'll note over here it's got a nugget value and it's got a first structure and a second structure and as it's going through fitting the model there's a progress bar on the bottom left and it's adjusting and telling you where you are. Now I'm still in the, the auto fit process but if I wanted to stop the auto fit I can fix the nugget, I can fix the seal, I can fix any of these values um, using these icons or radio buttons here. So the, the automatic process is finished, uh, that um, doesn't mean I can't move and adjust things to suit, but you notice that if I do move the nugget, for example, I'm moving the nugget on all three charts. If I do move one of the, um, the structures, I am moving it on all three. So it gets a bit tricky, so often the auto fit is, is the, certainly the first best thing, to, or the best target to go for first. Once you've done that, you're happy with that, you can then export that data and I'll just say copper um, greater than zero and that will be now saved in a verigram.vrg file which allows you to, uh, when you go to the block grade estimation panel, select that file and it'll auto populate the model variable that we've just looked at and set up. Okay, so that's a bit of revision in terms of uh, where we were with Vulcan 10. We can now go to the new tab, so which uh, has been introduced in 10.1, and that is the statistics. So we start off on the left, the general statistics. So using again the data that I've selected here, we can get uh, a range of, of, uh, of information, just general information, the number of sample counts, the mean, etc. Over here in the properties, and we've got extra fields, which I can have a look, and you get bringing things like variance and skewness, kurtosis. And then I've got a whole range of quantiles. So I can look at the data in terms of uh, the quantiles all the way through. And that's available for, for any of the data that I can, I've selected there. Also in this, um, we can now go to the, the histogram. So we can have a look at that. And again, the histogram, I'm looking at data for copper above zero. Um, over here on the properties panel, again, I can change the color. So maybe I'll choose that color there. I can come through and maybe change the axes you know, instead of looking at the right at all of the outliers. Maybe I just want to look at between zero and two, then maybe just having a look at uh, you know, 10 bins. So you can see I can change parameters over here on the, on the, in the properties panel and interactively update um, this data. You know, we've got 23,000 samples, I think. Later on, you'll see I'm, I'm running uh, yeah, 100,000 samples without uh, any delay. Uh, in addition to that, so we can have a look at the axes themselves, uh, introduce the ability to uh, look at the either X and Y axis on the linear, logarithmic or Gaussian um, space. So again, that updates uh, interactively. Again, the other axis here, you know, we, can, we can manipulate and, and change the, the scale on those axes quite easily. So yeah, a lot of capability in the histograms there. Now, as well as numeric histograms, like the copper we've got here, we can go to character histograms. So I've got a bound code here. This is capturing the, um, the data, uh, the, the domain that uh, this data is, is in. So if I go to the histogram for the bound, you'll see the number of samples here in the uh, y-axis and the different domains throughout the deposit. So I'll just color that up again. So I've got four domains and some type of cover sequence over that uh, 
So now let's have a look at that filter option again and um, let's add some filters this time for the domain. So I can just look at um, some cop um, data just in domain one or domain two, etc. So back to our new filtering um, table, select that uh, composite database. Now what I want to do is I want to take this um, existing filter and I want to add to it. So what I'm going to do is make a copy of that and I'll just call it domain one, just simple. I'll just rename that um, domain one. And again, go to the, because we're dealing with the composite database, come to the database tab there. We'll leave that, that, that filter on here. And if this is very familiar for those that have used uh, the Vulcan grade estimation and some of the other block sample selection or sample selection criteria, is that you can do multiple filters on top of each other, which wasn't possible easily in Vulcan 10.1 VDA. So because I've selected this, it's now letting me see into that file and therefore allowing me to pick um, data that's within this file, within that uh, domain. Oh, within these ones here. So that's the one. So I'll now copy that filter again and just call that D2. And just call that D2. I won't go through all of them, but you can see the, the principle is fairly simple. Fairly easy drop down list. And once you've set this up once, um, it's saved and stored for, for use um, in, in further sessions. So now I've got multiple filters here, one, two, three uh, filters. And again, I can apply those. Uh, let's, let's come down here and apply that. Apply filter two, apply filter one, and also do gold as well. I'll go apply the filter for that one and apply the filter. So you can start to see there's different filters appearing here. Uh, another new feature in Vulcan 10.1 is that we have a weighting. So we have filters, transformations, and weighting. Weighting, again, is fairly simple to set up. Again, I select my composite database so I can see into that what variables are available. Um, uh, an example for a weighting could be a density weighting. In this case, I don't have density. I'm just going to use length just as an example. And that sets up a weighting. So I can select the weighting now at this level or I can select it at that level. So you've got uh, uh, an additive effect of, of the length weighting for gold in that domain and length weight. So the cumulative effect there. So um, those filters there are, are again, easy, easy to set up. So what we might look at now is um, have a look at some more of the new charts. Um, if you notice this is context sensitive, if I just select say copper, only these icons here are highlighted. But if I go through and use my control key and actually I'll do the domain one and select gold in domain one as well, you'll see that these icons now are appearing and are now active. That means that I can, that we, I've chosen an appropriate amount of data to work on um, through here. So let's have a look at a scatter plot with these. So away we go, generate a scatter plot. Now that uh, hasn't quite worked for me. I think I know the answer to that. I'll just go back to my filters and just check my filters uh, were saved properly. And D2, domain two is there, that's right, D1. Ah, there we go, it's, it's dropped out there. And I have to go and select that myself. You learn more if you make mistakes. So uh, everyone's learning this lesson now and it'll be fixed in your mind. So now hopefully that filter has taken. So I'll go back to my scatter plot and we'll know if it has uh, worked because we'll get data on the screen. That's much more healthy. So again, the properties tab, um, once we've got data on the screen, we can go through and put uh, an equality line so in terms of the correlation, the one-to-one -one correlation between that data. We could go through and you know, change the color of that data. To, uh, you might have different color schemes for different data types. And we can also plot the uh, statistics for each of the axes. So um, I'll just pop those on the screen and the bivariate statistics, including the correlations between those samples. Uh, you can move this data around, so for plotting purposes, because when you, you come to the plotting, it's what you see is what you get. And also we can change the font, so if you want it a bit bigger, you can just go through interactively. If you want a bit smaller, you can uh, likewise put a smaller number. If you want to interactively change the decimal places, you can do that. So it's uh, it's all in your control. So uh, yeah, there's a, um, a scatter plot there. 
let's move next on here. Now, these uh, what we've done is we've taken the most common uh, data uh, data charts from the advanced statistics in, in previous versions of Open and brought them into um, into the data analyzer. In future versions, some of the lesser lesser used ones um, will, uh, will will appear. So just on the PP plot between those two, uh, and again, let's have an equality line, see where things are going. And um, there's the data there. And let's have a look now at the QQ. Now the QQ, you'll see we've got the, all the data extents. So in QQ, we're really interested in the tails, which is the, the end, the fitting of the tails down here. So coming back to that properties, I can adjust the, uh, adjust the extents and I'll do that for both X and Y, make that zero. And now you can have a look right at the the tail and look at the behavior of that chart. So um, in between the copper and gold in, in the database there. So that gives you a bit of an overview of some of the new chart types and their, their interaction and their ease of use using the properties. So what I'll jump to now is that when I go back to my data source, uh, another new feature as I mentioned at the start, I can now use block models. So I have a block model here which I'll use, of this, which has been built from, from this data. So you see just as we've got here the uh, composite database here uh, broken out, again I've got a few filters, uh, we've also got the, uh, we're seeing inside the, uh, the block model and the block model header. Like we did before, let's um, I'll look at some stats. Let's go straight to the um, general stats for uh, the copper grade. Again, we've got 1.3 million blocks there. Now you'll note that there's a lot of um, default values uh, in the block model here. It's minus um, minus uh, 99. Again, uh, what I'll do is add uh, to the existing greater than zero filter and, and just remove that. So uh, I'll just find this greater than zero filter and just edit that. And this time, when I select off the list, I'll choose my block model, and that allows me to use the block model tab here and populate um, data into the block model tab. So um, you see here we've got some Vulcan convention which is used elsewhere. I'm just put in a dollar V greater than zero, so it's fairly standard. So that should now, when I come back to do that, I'll apply that filter to the copper grades in the block model here. And um, let's just run this again, and we should see some behaviour there, which shows yes, it's it's cleaned out all those. The minimum value is now zero, and there's now 182,000 data points. So I'll do the same thing there for gold. So it's just a matter of going back to there and just applying that filter. So so we've got those those data points there. So what we will do we'll just to we'll compare, say, the scatter plot of that, the gold and the copper. And first we'll generate that. And we'll, we'll compare that to um, the scatter plot that we generated from down here in the database. Now it took slightly longer because it's a bigger data set, 180,000 points in this case. Uh, we've got the equality line and again we've got the annotations that we can pop and uh, put up in place wherever we want. And again you might want to move that one around. Maybe we'll change the colour to something different. So there's there's the scatter plot now for from the block model. So and as in the other example plots, we can go through and, and plot uh, you know the scatter plots, the PBQQ from from the block model. Uh, another feature for those the users who may or may not have found it previously is that you can when your data explore here, you can organise your data by different criteria. Uh, and there's some preset ones there, organised by variable, by filter. So in this case, by filter allows me to see the greater than zero filter down here, domain one, domain two. So that if you've got a lot of domains, that this uh, filtering might be uh, might be easy uh, for you to use to to understand your data. Uh, we haven't set up any transformations, but there's a similar thing there. And again, by weighting, and I did have one weight down here, yes, length weighting. So that's another uh, usability tool to to uh, when you've got a lot of these to be able to manage that. Also, you can roll these up so you don't see them if you're not using that one in a particular uh, session. Now, I haven't saved any of this yet, so it's a very simple process. If I save that, and I'll call this um, webinar uh, on the 18th, and that sets up a .vda underscore project file, and that project file captures all of your data, 
to, uh, all of your setup, uh, all of your filters, your weightings, etc. So that's all stored there so that you can recall that and, and reuse that uh, in, in following sessions. Okay, just a couple of final ones there. Um, we have a look at the cumulative distribution and I'll just throw, say, copper up here, cumulative frequency plot and um, was one of the last ones that we generated and that is best looked at when you have the axes. You'll need that into a, a log scale and then you get your standard cumulative distribution there. So uh, again, yeah, uh, we've got a whole range of different charts as I forecast with a whole lot of tabs. Uh, if you want to look at a grid view here, that will allow you to see them in a, in a tabular form and allows you then to select things, say, for plotting. So I've got a whole series of three by three there. I can come back and, and add or, or reduce or increase the number of columns. Now, just a reminder, when it comes to plotting, I can select one or multiple of those. Uh, what you see is what you get. So, you know, position these where you want them. Go to the export tab, hit the PNG export option. It has a bit of a preview window. Go and export that and I'll just uh, say demo and that'll export that as a PNG and that was then able to be dropped straight into a NUT Word document for reporting purposes. So again, here's a workflow, nice clean appearance uh, and uh, you know, the idea is to, to make uh, life easier for yourselves in that. So John, that's a, a, um, all we have time for in terms of the live demonstration. There's, there's a lot of smaller features and enhancements that have been made to the data analyzer in 10.1 and I suggest that the viewers uh, have a look at the release notes that come with the, the new version and uh, work through those. So uh, back over to yourself. Thanks, Steve. Before addressing a couple of questions, can you let us know what other changes have been made to Vulcan 10.1 that could be of use to resource geologists? Yes, um, okay, there's been quite a bit of work in the geology realm for, for Vulcan 10.1 and um, uh, I guess in no particular order we've got the um, multi-ID grade estimation, so uh, whereby you've got a lot of of estimation runs and some people have you know, tens, hundreds or even thousands of estimation runs. Uh, they run at the moment in Vulcan 10 sequentially. So in Vulcan 10.1 we've introduced multi-threading so that you can do a whole lot of um, groups of IDs together in parallel and better use of the multiple cores available in all the modern computers that we use. So as an example in our uh, test environment we've got an estimation run that took a total of five hours in Vulcan 10 and in Vulcan 10.1 we've got that down to under one hour. Now the benefit of that is that if you're doing things in, uh, in under an hour you've got uh, many Operations you can do changing parameters uh, during a single shift rather than that five hours you could probably do you know maybe at two two of those and then you've got to kick it off and, and let it run overnight and see what's um, changed in the morning. Secondly in the multivariate statistics uh, so in, we've gone through and introduced the log ratio method for transformation so you can tra backwards transform and forward transform in using log ratio. Uh, implicit modeling uh, we've uh, done some more improvements to that. We're probably up to around the fourth iteration of that. Uh, we've added more user control, uh, more parameters that you can change to uh, adjust the algorithms and control uh, the outcomes and uh, also again uh, improve the processing speed on that using some multi-threading. And finally and not restricted purely to geology, uh, we've introduced Python scripting into Vulkan uh, for 10.1. So that means anyone can uh, do make customized solutions for block models, databases, map files, grids, triangulations and set up a whole array of procedures for, for other people or themselves to use. And the Python scripting is not going to be a, an entry level option It's pro, um, in terms of setting up but, but once something's been set up it can be used by anyone that's familiar with Vulkan. So that's a, that's a, a quick wrap and obviously there's other uh, enhancements in mind planning and surveying and geotech but they'll be covered in future webinars John. Thanks, Steve. Um, now we have had a few questions come in. Uh, the first one asks, uh, you showed using block models as data source for statistics. What about variography of block models? Yes, so we haven't got there yet. So it's a good question. Uh, you had a look when I had a look at the, um, the variography, sorry, when I'm looking at the uh, copper here uh, in the stats, you'll see that some of these are highlighted. That means they're active. These ones aren't active as I explained before, but as soon as I select a, a second data source, they are now active. So if we go to the variography with the bot models and if I select one 
two or, or ten variables, these aren't active. So uh, that work is still um, in progress and we hope to develop, um, have that released uh, in coming version of Vulcan. So uh, watch this space. Beautiful. Um, next one, can you overlay two or more graphs in the same window? Uh, for example, a block model variable with its equivalent database variable. Okay, uh, let's, let me think on that one quickly. So if I grab something from the block model here and the what have we got copper and grab the copper um, I'll save there uh, let's go to our stats uh, cumulative frequency and we can now again we've got to adjust the uh, log there so what we're seeing now is we've got in uh, two two charts here and the, the, the legend here showing that uh, the One's the block model, the darker one down here, and the uh, the lighter one there is out of the uh, composite database. So yes, you can do that by se selecting using control key and and uh, for any of combination and choosing the chart type you want to display. Nice one. Um, next question is about scatter plots. Um, it asks, can you hover over a data point in a scatter plot and have it give you background information? At the moment, if I if I go back to one of our scatter plots, um, which uh, we got one, it's a little wild. Yep. At the moment, um, if I hover over here, I've got, all I'm getting is the is the data. Um, I guess what that um, is leading into that question really is where we're headed with Vulcan. Um, the next version of Vulcan, Vulcan 10.2, is we are integrating integrating uh, the Vulcan data analyzer with uh, Envisage, the uh, graphical interface for Vulcan, whereby you can highlight things in Envisage and then populate them into Vulcan data analyzer, or you can highlight parts of a chart uh, in data analyzer and go and see the population in three dimensions uh, in, in Envisage. So uh, not currently capable uh, in this version, but that's, uh, that's the direction we're heading. Thanks for that, Steve. Um, and we're running out of time, but I think might be time for, for one more quick question. Um, the question asks, is it possible to build a PP plot for copper by domain? Uh, for example, see one single graph showing copper in more than one domain. Let's have a look at that. I haven't done that particular combination myself, but um, I've put both there in the same chart. But um, now, we might have to get back to someone on that. Um, I, I can't see them unless they're identical, which is unlikely. Uh, maybe we'll come back to that one. Uh, then that's that's D1 and D2, but yes, I think that that's quite, hasn't quite answered the question. So maybe if we can grab that um, customer's name, I'll, I'll have a look at that and get back to them uh, privately. Thanks, Steve. Will do. Um, and thanks again for providing us with an overview of the upgrades to Vulkan Data Analyzer in Vulkan 10.1. Customers with current software maintenance can download the latest version of Vulkan from users.maptech.com. When you're there, you'll be able to see that the Vulkan 10.1 is now available. Of course, if you have any questions about using Vulkan, please contact your local Maptech office for assistance. If you'd like to view this webinar again or have any colleagues who didn't get the chance to join us today, you'll be able to view it on maptech.com. While you're there, you can catch up on our other webinars covering a whole range of topics. We'll be running additional webinars about Vulcan 10.1 in the near future, so stay tuned on the website for more information. Thanks again for joining us. Have a great day.